Hey, how's it going? This is Rob from Justin's Toys, and today I'm going to teach you how to do a variation of the Hexafish. So you can see this one almost looks like there's hearts on the side. This is actually the same design, it's just a little different because of the color theme, and you can't really notice it as much, but anyway, it's still a cool design. You can feel the texture where it grooves out a little bit. And basically, this starts off just like a hexafish. You want to set up your loom just like this. If you want to take a moment to pause, go right ahead. Make sure your setup is just like this. This is going to be the best way to set it up. And again, you're going to use this side right here so that the arrow is pointing away and you're using the opposite end of the arrow so that it's going to be easier to get your hook inside these grooves right here and pull the sides of the hexafish up. Alright, so starting with my first six rubber bands, I'm going to use rubber bands that are completely irrelevant to my bracelet. So again, I'm going to create something just like this for this video. Um, same exact thing. I'm going to take eights, and since black is a color that's high contrast from white, it'll make it easier for the end. I'm taking the eights and I'm lining them up all across the perimeter of that six peg rectangle. So as you can see, it doesn't matter what order you put them, as long as you have all six pegs connected to create that rectangle. Alright. So just like a regular hexafish, now I'm going to grab my first two rubber bands. These are the ones that matter, so you can pick the colors that you actually like. And then apply your first rubber band on top, completely around all six sides. Alright? So as you can see, I did all six. And then, again... I push down on all the sides of the rubber band so that there's room for this rubber band. And as you can see, you want to make sure you never mix up the order. So the middle rubber band is always in the middle. The top rubber band is always on the top. If you have them overlapping in the wrong way, that's going to create a problem later on where your design might not come out perfect. So, now that I know everything is in order, I can begin to start looping. So the easiest way, you always want to make sure you grab rubber bands by the outside, not by the inside. You can't go in here and bring it up. I mean, I feel like a lot of people are having trouble because they don't, they're not grabbing from the outside. Well, let me show you the easiest way to grab rubber bands. You're going in front and you're going in that groove so for these two I grab the two bring it up right here is the best spot to grab things alright so you grab it bring it up over here again you're grabbing it you're bringing it up and you turn it around and then again you're going in the groove this is going to be the easiest way to do this so remember have the hook facing the top of the loom where the pegs are and you're grabbing those bottom two rubber bands and you're bringing it up and over all right so now I'm pushing down a little bit not all the way down you're gonna notice that the the further you bring it down the more tension you're gonna create and that's why people are having problems and rubber bands are snapping. You want to keep it as close to the top as possible but still enough space so that it's going to be in order. 
So as you can see, mine are in order. Now I'm going to grab just the bottom rubber band. All right, so one. Just one. Just one. Again, remember to go in the grooves. Alright, now push down slightly again, and I am going to repeat this step another three times, so there was a total of six rubber bands that were completed. Alright, so here I'm going to do the fast forward thing. All right, so as you can see, I have four rubber bands, white rubber bands right here. One, two, three, four, and two on the outside. So that's six in total. And now this is where the variation trick comes in. I want to grab one pink. And rather than putting it on all six sides, I want to put it like this. All right, so you're almost creating like an arrow connecting three sides. All right, it's gonna look kind of like a boomerang. You're not going over this one. You're going inside this peg and you're connecting this peg, this peg, and this peg with the rubber band. And just like before, you're still grabbing all six sides on the bottom rubber band and you're bringing it over. Okay. All right. And you're going to continue doing that for another six bands. And you're going to notice that there's going to be pegs that have either one or two rubber bands depending on which peg it is. So again, I'm just grabbing the bottom. Now there's two rubber bands here. I'm grabbing the bottom. Now there's only one rubber band here. I'm grabbing the bottom. Now there's two rubber bands here. So you're going to really want to pay attention and make sure you're doing all six sides when you're pulling up whites. Right. And there's my sixth side. Again, push down just a little bit. Put the white on top. Now this one, since the pink is the lowest on all sides, look at the ones that have three. Make sure the lowest one is the one that you're grabbing up. And in this case, it's going to be pink. You're only grabbing the pink. 
and you're bringing the pink up. Okay? So you're not doing all six sides when the pink is the lowest. Important step. Very crucial. If you don't understand this, it's not going to come out right. So again, just the pinks on the sides the pinks are. Once you bring all three sides of the pink up, push down a little bit, and then put another white on. And you're just going to continue like you did before. Alright? So once you have the pink on, you'll see you're doing six more white. So already there's three, because as you see I pulled one up and there's still two on the side which means that there's three more whites that I need to put on top before I put my next pink. Alright, so there's still three more to go. I'm going to do a little fast forward. Okay, so as you can see, again, I have four right there. One, two, three, four, and then two on the sides. So I know my count is at six right now. And at this point, now I can grab another pink. But remember last time, I put it this way. I'm actually going to do it the opposite way. I'm going to start from here and create another arrow or boomerang, whatever you want to call it, pointing in the opposite direction. And that's what's going to make this go here, then out, then here, then out. All right, so once I put that pink on top, again, all six sides, I'm just grabbing the bottom and I'm bringing it up, okay. Again, make sure you keep count of all six because if you skip any or you do the same one twice, it's not going to come out right. So it's definitely important to keep track. Alright, I got all six. You're doing all six on just the whites. When you hit the pink and the pink is the lowest one, then you're only doing three sides. So here, as you can see, reference the pink. And if the pink is not the lowest one, then that means you gotta grab all six sides. In this case, two, three, four, five, six. Now one more on top. Push down a little bit. All around all six sides, as close to the top as possible. Again, you don't want to mix up your order, so making sure All right. so since we're looking at the pink now and the pink is on the bottom now we're only up picking up the pink on all three sides
Now once you do that, you can resume with just adding whites on top and doing all six sides again since we're past the pink. Right, so again, push down. So basically now, there's two whites. We're going to do this four more times. And instead of putting it on this, these three pegs, you're going to go on these three pegs and then keep alternating. So pink here, six more whites, then pink here, six more whites. When it's long enough to fit around your wrist, that's when you're going to stop and clip it. All right, so as you can see, I've reached the point where it's starting to get congested. What you want to do is you want to take the hook, just grab some of those bands, it doesn't matter which ones, as long as you got a grip on some of them and you just pull it slightly okay and that is gonna start to thin out and as you can see now it's gonna be less congested and now you can push down and move forward a little easier so again grabbing my next rubber band making sure it's on top of everything and I'm just going to continue Right, again, make sure they're not in the wrong order. Okay. Go in the groove. Right, one side. Turn it up. Alright, so I'll be back when this bracelet is long enough.
Alright, so now I'm about ready to uh, start clipping. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do one last one. Go around the edges. Alright, I got all four sides, I mean all six sides, and what I want to do at this point, I just want to still grab that last one, bring it up, so as you can see that bottom one, so that there's only one rubber band left on the sides. Okay, now there's one rubber band left on all six pegs. Now what I want to do is I actually want to transfer this over here, this over here, this over here. So you're transferring one rubber band to the adjacent peg and you're either following a clockwise or counterclockwise motion. And for me, I'm following a counterclockwise, as you can see. This part gets really tight. Make sure you be very careful when you're transferring the rubber bands because this is the most difficult part and most prone to rubber band snapping. So you don't want to be jittery and, you know, pull things too hard. Alright, at that point, now you only have three sides. You cut it down. You want to take a rubber band and connect those three sides just like those boomerangs and arrows that you were creating with the pink ones but only going over the pegs that still have rubber bands on them once you do that you're going in and you're grabbing those two bottom rubber bands and you're bringing it over that top rubber band alright so there's one again this side push down so I can easily Grab those. You have to try to pull it over. Sometimes that top rubber band will kind of get in the way and come up too. Just make sure you hold on to that tight so in case you can still grab it and not have to uh, fix the error as much. Okay, again I separated those two. I brought them to the bottom so I can grab them easier. And I'm bringing that over that top rubber band. And as you can see, now all I have is three sides. And one rubber band, which is holding them. So at this point, I'm pulling that and I'm bringing it back to itself on this top peg. And then this last side, I'm pulling off. And I'm pulling it back to itself right here. Okay. Now upon doing that, you can see all three ends of that single rubber band are now conveniently placed on that one peg. And that's going to make it the easiest for me to clip. I'm going to hold on to the C-clip. Firm grip. And I'm just going to pull it down as you can see I have all three ends of that hexafish well that rubber band that's holding the hexafish and at this point I can actually just pull it off alright so that side is completely clipped now I just want to pull and flatten this bracelet out making sure I'm holding on to that clip well enough that it's having all three ends clip and secure. I'm just flatten this bracelet out. All right. Now this is the other end of the hexafish. 
um, what I'm gonna gonna do now is I'm gonna transfer this back onto the loom okay this time it's gonna be a lot easier I know a lot of you have had problems before but um since I chose colors that were completely irrelevant to my hexafish it should be easier I'm going to take this and place it in the center of the hexafish and you're gonna see that these six ends right here so this where my fingernail is this 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 and this is actually what's going to be transferred back onto the loom and now the, here's another trick as you can see these are all held by these black rubber bands and you can actually use these black rubber bands to pull and to make it easier for you to hook on these whites so if you take this and you pull you know you can actually more easily grab I mean the first ones are kinda easy so I'm not gonna pull them at this point but I'll show you what I mean on the final ones so what I like to do is I actually start off on one end of the six pegs and then working diagonally across I'm actually going to take the other side which should be three points away one two and it's going to be this one right here I'm going to grab those two and I'm going to put it diagonally across so pushing down I am going to grab these two and pull it diagonally across, put it onto that peg. Now as you can see there's two sides here and two sides here. This is going to go here, this is going to go here, this is going to go here, and this is going to go here. And as you can see if I pull this black string you're going to see like a little gap open up so you can more easily grab those whites and at that point I am going to transfer that back onto this peg alright and again right here you see you pull those blacks from up top you kind of open up the space Pull on the blacks and then use them in order to open up that space. Sometimes you have to pull hard. As you can see, I got those two whites. I'm bringing them back up and over. Right now, I got two sides left on the other side. Again, I'm going to turn this around. And I'm going to pull on those blacks. That's going to create a little space. There you go. Bring that over here. At this point, it's getting really tense. So I do recommend being very gentle, as gentle as you can possibly be. And then there's the last two rubber bands right there. Going in that hole after I'm pulling the blacks, trying to grab just those two white rubber bands. That is in them. Let me go identifying. All right, those are these right here. And I'm going to grab those two. It doesn't matter if I grab the blacks at this point because I'm actually going to rip those blacks out. And I got those two whites. And I just want to make sure I'm only grabbing two of those whites. Alright, as you can see, I got two whites. Alright, now at this point, since I have all six sides, you know, inspect, make sure you have two rubber bands on all six sides. You can actually pull off these black rubber bands now because they are actually just going to get in the way. Alright. So once you do that, very carefully 
pull them out. You know, you might want to cut them as many times as possible. That way you don't have to pull the whole string and the friction from the rubber bands doesn't end up cutting another rubber band that is needed. Okay. okay, so at this point I have everything transferred back onto the loom and I just want to pull on it a little bit so I can identify which one's on the bottom. When you pull on it, you should be able to see which one's on the bottom and which one's on the top. And at this point I'm also going to take the bottom rubber band and I'm bringing it back up to the top so that now there's only going to be one rubber band on the sides on each peg. So there you go, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, one okay now just like before I am going to transfer the rubber bands from one peg to the adjacent peg in either a clockwise or counterclockwise motion so one to the next one then move this one down to the next one Again, at this point, it starts to get really tense, so you might want to do it very gently. Like I feel like it's going to snap right now, but if you just move slowly and you kind of tug at it a little bit, that might minimize your chances. Alright, so now I got all the rubber bands on only three sides, and just like before, it's the same exact thing. I'm going to put one rubber band and just like those arrows or boomerangs that we made before, you're covering just three sides. You're going in there and you're going to grab the bottom two rubber bands and you're bringing it up over that one rubber band that you just put on top. And you got to make sure this is on top. so. I'm actually going to take it off and just re-put it because it was all mixed up. Okay. So, you're grabbing just the bottom. Bottom two. You're bringing it up and over. Bottom two. Up and over. And then the bottom two. Up and over. Alright, so there you go. Now you have one rubber band holding the whole entire end and at this point just like before you are gonna grab all three ends and bring it to one. So there is one side and there is this last side and you bring it to there. around and over and now hold on to this and bring this back around now you can easily just grab the other end where the hook is hold on to the top and then pull up and I have it clipped alright so there you go and there you have it that is a finished Hexafish heart variation.
as you can see and at this point you can just pull on the ends just to straighten it out and just like before you might want to squish it so it flattens out and makes a nice little curve uniform girth all the way around and there you go I'm finished with the heart variation like us share it check out justinstoys.com for some cool rainbow loom stuff and leave your comments below I'll tune in to the ones that are actually reasonable <laughs>